911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Sergeant Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm really good. I'm trying to decide what the game plan is for today. Well, you tell me I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you're, you're finally off. I know. I thought that today we could talk a little bit about redefining self-worth in law enforcement because I was reading a post that somebody had put, basically... Um, upset about the way that some things are going in their department. And Clint, you and I were talking about how a lot of people who are most qualified get passed over for certain details and things that they're trying to apply for within their departments. And there's so there's so much politics that takes place in law enforcement. And I think that there's this common belief that if you're not moving forward, then you're standing still in law enforcement. And what I mean by that is, There are very few people that stay as a patrolman level in their career as police officers. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. You always want that forward progression. You always want something new. And, and, you know, being stuck in patrol is not always a bad thing, but you always want that kind of change of scenery and, and more responsibility. I, It's funny, I actually just had a conversation with a buddy that I haven't seen in a while. Uh, and he, he told me, like, he, he promoted, he moved up to the detective bureau and he's like, man, I wish I could go back to patrol because it's so much easier and it's so much less work. There's less drama. There's everything. Like when you go home for the day, you're done for the day. And, but the reality is, is once he's back in that situation, he's going to want that forward progression again. And he's just not happy in the exact environment that he's in. Isn't it interesting to think about how many police officers are incredibly boisterous when it comes to their career and what they do? Yeah. I'm thinking of an officer. I'm thinking of somebody who was an officer for a short period of time. And then they went, um, and started doing something else and that boisterous nature just never went away, you know? And I think that it's very important for people to recognize that you are 100% replaceable. I'm thinking of a specific police officer who you would think that this individual is like the, the prime police officer within the entire department and something happened to this officer and they're no longer, they're on pause when it comes to being able to, to work. And it's like, it's like they never existed, you know, and it's so sad to say that, but it's the reality where you're not missed. And all of the things that you were as the best police officer at the department, they're non-existent because as soon as that vacancy opens up, it gets filled. And and I tell my guys that all the time, like, and it's not trying to like make them think that they're less than by any means. Ultimately, for any and all of us in law enforcement, we're replaceable. We're a number on a on a sheet, and if we were to leave, they are going to backfill behind you. Doesn't mean that the person who's backfilling behind you is going to be better than you or or worse. I mean, it, it could be better than you or worse than you. And it's one of those things. It's having the realization that. No matter what you do in your career, you are going to be replaceable. Like, the world will move on. And a a lot of times, officers want certain details or certain promotions um, because they're looking at the pay scale for a majority of the time. And if you're smart, then you're looking at that retirement pay scale. And I think that, you know, going to the example that you just gave of somebody having that promotion and wishing that they can go back, it's important to realize the longevity of things in your career because, Typically, the further that you move up, it, you're not going to have an opportunity to move back unless you switch departments. Or you make a mistake. And yeah, you or you get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. And and it's one of those things like, I, and I've always looked at this within my own career of how, how I'm going to do whatever I'm doing. If I'm in a specific detail, I'm going to give it my all when I'm in that position. When I'm out of it, 
guess what? Like I gave it my all while I was in it, but I was replaced and I move forward. I keep that forward progression going. And no matter what you're doing at any given moment, it's keeping your head up and just giving it your all and and everything you do. Yeah. And I also think it's important to make sure that you're considering the the long-term side effects, so to speak, of, of that forward progression. Is that something that you're going to want to um, be stuck in the grind of day in and day out? And if not, to settle with the, the fact that it's okay for you to not have that forward progression because it doesn't mean that you're any less than. Every single position within the department is incredibly vital. Yeah, especially, and and I tell my guys this all all the time, what is the primary function of a police department? Patrol. Patrol is the primary function. No matter what, ultimately, at some point, you will be going back to patrol. Enjoy what you're doing in that given moment and find avenues of how you can enjoy it more. But also, just know you're going to have forward progression in the future. There's going to be a change of scenery. There's some something's going to happen. You're going to have an ad administration shift. You're going to have more positions opening, and it doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to ever have forward progression. It just means it's not happening right now. Yeah, not only that, but a lot of people are confined to the aspect of their department progression only. If I were a police officer, depending on the politics within my department, here's how I would go about it. I think that I would get to a certain level, whether it was just, you know, basic being a patrolman or um, maybe making it to where you are, Clint, as a sergeant, because it's it's more cush in mm-hmm. terms of, you know, mentally it's more cush. And not to say it's going to be like that for every department. However, I would get to that point to where I was like, okay, this is a a cush spot. And then I would expand my law enforcement career outside of my department. I would get a a second job. I would get, um, you know, details that are outside of my department that allow me to expand on the things that I want to learn more of outside of the realm of my department, because that's the secondary. That's the that's the area where you're not going to feel as much pressure. You're not going to feel like you need to advance. You you literally have a, a second option there. Yeah, it's one of those things that you find the avenues that work for you. And like the higher in promotion you go, the less and less opportunities will arise for you. Like I look at when I was a, a officer and what opportunities there were available to me. There's a lot of them and you can set yourself up for those. Then you move to detective or corporal and and you start seeing these opportunities kind of, it's not because you're promoting and it's just, you can't get them. It's well, it is, you can't get them because there's not positions for the, the higher ranking, there's less and less. So it becomes a more competitive kind of market when it comes to having those positions. So if you're feeling stagnant, find something that energizes you. Some Find something that you want to keep moving forward with. Why is it that when I talk to police officers outside of California, something very common is for them to have security details that are outside of their department, and yet the cities have like contracts for the officers to be able to do that, but I don't ever hear police officers in California talk about that. From what I know, I'm not super educated on it, but from what I know is it's cheaper for them to have the contract to subcontract like officers to be able to work those off duty compared to actually have them working, um, being under the umbrella of the city. Cause then the city's not having to be liable for their medical insurance and all the extra stuff that goes into it. Hmm. Interesting. So I I think that in summary, the most important thing here is to understand that success in law enforcement is not solely defined by climbing the ranks. No, absolutely not. And I think that, too, we need to understand that there are many other aspects of the job that don't necessarily um, follow under that umbrella of the job, the job analysis or the job detail. And what I mean by that is, you know, educating yourself more on different community outlets, for example. So you can you could expand your career in something that actually doesn't have anything directly tied to law enforcement, but that will enhance your career. Clint, I'm thinking about you as uh, basically like this wholesome public servant, especially with your involvement in the community. Yeah, it, it's one of those things like find something that you're enjoying. And, you know, you could still serve the public without 
being in your official capacity of law enforcement and being able to find those avenues to where you can not only benefit you on on the law enforcement side, but benefit the community and then provide your services to them. Yeah. Ultimately, find what you like, discover what you're good at, and dive into that more, whether it's within your department or not. I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.